and uh, good morning. Welcome to uh, another Saturday preview with my good self, David Massey. It's a quarter to ten on a Friday morning. I thought I'd get in nice and early, get the video out of the way because uh, I've got quite a bit on today, um, and I've already pretty much, I already pretty much know what I want to be batting at uh, at Kempton and at Newcastle tomorrow. Um, so I thought I'd do a video rather than uh, do some do the written Saturday selections and then I'll, I'll post this up alongside uh, Cheltenham's Thursday preview. We're up to Thursday already. Um, two and a bit weeks to go to Cheltenham. It's all starting to sort of fall into place a little bit now. Um, if you've read the Haylock notes that I put up today on the Daily Punt, you'll see that I'm, having been at Haylock now last weekend, I'm pretty keen on Liz Nagaroska for the stayers. Um, I think there's some big prices still flying around and I, I think he's I think he's a big price now, having seen him in the flesh last week and he'll come on plenty for a, for a run. I think he's a very, very interesting player now in a, a fairly open stay as hurdle, I think, I have to say. I think it's, you know, you, you can make cases and knock holes in pretty much everything at the front end, so I think it's quite a, an open race. Anyway, we'll discuss that nearer the time. What we'll try and do tomorrow is try and find a winner or two at Kempton and we'll have a quick look at the Ida as well. Um, Kempton card, I'll do the first five races, the uh, TV races. The 115 at Kempton. Two mile five furlong and handicap hurdle. Um, good race, 0 to 140 and there are some unexposed sorts in here in the shape of Diocletian and Major Dundee. Um, both of whom will appreciate decent ground, both of whom appear to be going the right way, and both of whom are carrying under 11 stones, so there's there's lots to like about their chances, they'll get they'll get bet. If they get over bet, and by that I mean, you know, if the pair of them start sort of crash the market a little bit, as, as, as possible, and some of these outsiders start to drift, I mean, the likes of, of top, the top and the bottom, you've got Golden Fortune, um, for Phil Middleton at the bottom, you've got top man for Chris Gordon, and you can make cases for both of those. And if they keep keep drifting, um, I'd be interested in having small bets on the pair of them. Um, Golden Fortune was in the, the process of running a really good race at Warwick in the, the Hampton. That's over fences, that's a, a, the Grade 2 Hampton. Um, where, had he not made a mistake at the last in the back, I think he would have given Next Destination and Fiddler on the Roof something to think about. He used up all the petrol coming back round the outside, trying to get his position two out, so it's no surprise that he was cooked by the time he got to the last. But he still only got beaten just over six lengths. It's a really good run, very good effort. Um, he's in uh, He's in the National Hunt Chase, yeah, National Hunt Chase, and I think the Ultima at the festival. And he's also in the Grand National. So he's obviously using this as a hurdles race as a stepping stone, but that doesn't mean he can't win it. And he's certainly got bits and pieces of form that would give him a chance over hurdles. Marker 139 looks entirely fair. So I don't think he's out of it. I'd probably want bigger than 16, given that, as we say, it might be a, a warm-up for something else. And down the bottom, top man as well, who's fell out of it, fell out of love a bit with fences this season. He won at Fontwell in October... But then has fallen twice since then, and I wonder if that's I wonder if that affected him a little bit. He, he reverted to he reverted to hurdles over this course and distance on on Boxing Day, and he was fourth. Well, well, well beaten fourth, but nevertheless, you know, he was fourth of fifteen behind Monte Cristo, um, and his jumping that day wasn't brilliant. He kept jumping out to his left, and I just wonder if his confidence had been affected a little bit. That's not his only good run at, at Kempton. He was sixth here to downtown getaway in what was an, a red-hot handicap hurdle last year that's worked out quite well. Um, the race at downtown getaway won. Palmer's Hill was second. R Power was third. Polish was fourth. I mean, that's, you know, they all come out and run really well. And, and Polish, of course, did his bit of a turn last week at, uh, at, at Newbury. That, that's hot handicap form. And he's on the same mark tomorrow. If he's got his confidence back, he'll like the ground. We obviously know that the, the you know conditions are ideal for him. Can Kempton two and a half, two mile five. Again, he needs to drift a bit, but he's he's not without hope, top man. So they're they're both interesting if they keep drifting in price. Um, one fifty is the the pendle. Only the four runners. Um, when I first looked at this race, I thought I know which one I want to be with. 
I still want to be with Galore, but I'm not quite as confident as I was when I first looked at it yesterday. Um, I think a small field, what the possibility of quick ground tomorrow at Kempton, it's already good, and they've got another day of drying on it yet with, with little or no rain to come. There might be a bit of dew in the morning as there was around here. Um, he's had a bit of a break since his, since his third to all mankind. Uh, in the Henry VIII, he got beat. Uh, he got beat about eight lengths there, I think. Ten lengths, I apologise. He got beat ten. Um, but that wasn't a bad run because it was on soft ground and on a track that I don't think particularly suited him. I think this will. Um, sharp, right-handed, decent ground. And, you know, you look at his win Canton form and I know it was only a three-runner race and Grand Sancy wasn't happy from a long way. But, you know, that was this was the rising stars. But Hurricane Harvey... Finished 22 lengths behind him, and he came out next time and won a grade two at Doncaster. Um, I, I like him. I like him, Galore. I'm just a little bit concerned, you know, if they go forward with um, with Cool Cody here. It's a slight concern, but I, I don't think they will. I think they'll be happy to sit in behind. And um, Galore's the better horse anyway, I think. Tamrock de Mathan is going to be favourite for this because of his second to Shishkin last time. Be interesting to say I, I'm at this moment in time I'm with Shishkin rather than against him for the Arkle. But it was pointed out to me that so far, you know, the horses that finished behind Shishkin have hardly advertised the form. And you'd want to see Tamrock de Mathan. If you're a Shishkin supporter, you'd want to see Tamrock de Mathan win tomorrow probably. Um and I don't know as he will. I say I'm I'm with Galore, not strongly, but I think if you are um it's only a four-runner race, uh, and I think if you're desperate for a bet, he'd probably be the one. Um, the Adonis follows two mile for juveniles. Um, last year we were with Solo, and it hosed up, and we ended up getting good value for something that got completely stuffed, as it turned out in the triumph later. But never mind. I'm already with Tritonic. When we get to the Cheltenham Friday preview, you'll see that I'm already quite keen on Tritonic um, for varying reasons, and I think tomorrow. I, I'm not com completely convinced that tomorrow's test will suit. It wouldn't be the biggest surprise if he if he got beat tomorrow and then sort of came back to Cheltenham. I think Cheltenham will suit him more than Kempton, weirdly. Um, but I was impressed with him at Ascot because he really dug in. He looked beaten at a couple of stages, but after the last, he really dug deep to, to beat Casalupi. He re us here. So I was quite taken by that. Stamina looks like it might might be one of his long suits which is as i say which is why i think Cheltenham might suit him better that's a good thing he's already proven that he's all right in the hustle and bustle of a, a big race because he was second in the uh, the golden gates at royal ascot to highland chief last year um and that's that's you know very good that's top class handicap form so he's proven himself in the hustle and bustle of a big race so i think come cheltenham i don't think he's got any problems as regards conditions there i just not quite sure that tomorrow will suit we'll we'll see i hope he wins i hope he wins i really do i won't be having a bet in the race um but i hope he wins um an interesting one down the bottom again i'm not advocating a bet by any means but Marta de mott tom simons um the, 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 this is only a second run for tom he won twice in france um, and he was last of five on his debut for Tom at Taunton. He went out like a light behind talking about you. But that was on heavy ground, which I don't particularly think she would have wanted. Interestingly, she's in the Boodles. She's been ended up in the Boodles. So, and Tom's not someone I associate with calling his geese one. So he obviously thinks a little bit of Marta de Mott. Now she's on a marker 125 already because of a French form, which will need to go up from that. If she's going to be getting herself in the boodles, probably she's probably going to need to go up seven or eight, I think. So expect a better showing, I think, from Marta de Mott tomorrow is what I'm saying without necessarily winning. Um, let's see how she goes on. But clearly connection think a little bit of her. They think better of her than, than she's shown there at Taunton. Um, interesting without, as I say, necessarily nailing her down to a bet. Uh, three o'clock is the dove cut. Um, from a betting perspective, I have 
little to no interest in this. Um, it's a question of whether I think Athol Street, who looked, he looked, a, he looked a galloper at Taunton last time. He just sort of went further and further clear the, the more the race went on. Whether he can shake off Calico, who looked much more a speedy sort at Ludlow. He travelled well, and then when he was asked to sort of win his race after the last, he quickened up nicely and soon put the race to bed. I think the race might suit Calico a little more than Athol Street. Then you've got Cape Gentleman to sort of throw into the mix as well. He disappointed on heavy ground behind Gallard de Menil at the uh, DRF, but had looked pretty useful when he beat um, um, a bit of a big field at Punchestown the time before in the maiden, kneel, maiden hurdle. Um, Petit Bonhomme, that's it. I was trying to think of the name that he beat. Petit Bonhomme of Henry de Bromeds. Um, and he looked useful that day. Again, though, he's got to prove himself on this quicker ground. It's just not a betting contest. I'm happy to sit and watch and not particularly make a recommendation. But the 335, um, the three mile, well, it's the Close Brothers Handicap Chase. We've known it in the past as varying names. I think it's been obviously the Racing Post in its time. I think it was the Triple Eight Sport and oh, whatever. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, it's usually a, a really well contested handicap. And this year is no exception. Um, you can put the pen, I think, through a few on grounds of them being doubtful stayers, I think. And, you know, I mean, for all that I love Acer, I don't really, I've never seen him as a three-miler. Clondor Castle, not sure. Al Dancer, not sure. Raymond de Senam, not sure. You can sort of start putting the pen through a few, you, as you, you have to do with these races, otherwise you end up giving everything a chance. Captain Ord is obvious enough on what he's been doing, um, but I made the point on uh, the punting pointers the other day that Christian Williams' horses are, you know, if, if you're backing one of his, you want to be taking the price. And he did have a winner at Chepstow yesterday, arguably. It wasn't a lucky winner, but the second Sanford Castle rather chucked the race away. He, he had the race won. And if you take that winner out, you know, he, he, the form of his horses in the last fortnight reads pulled up fifth pulled up pulled up pulled up seventh pulled up pulled up he's had a hard time of it this year christian williams he's nine from 155 runners do you want to be taking nine to two about one of those in a big handicap the chance is there the form's there we all know it but i just don't want to be taking fours and four and a half of our er that have not really fired the winners in this year and there are definitely here bigger priced alternatives um, are we overlooking a blindingly obvious one in double shuffle would be the first thing. Now, on form, he can't beat Captain Ord because he was well behind him at Kempton at Christmas when the, the pair of them were behind Royal Pagai. But double shuffle helped force too fast a pace that day. Um, whereas that wasn't the case last time out. He, he travelled well, tracked the leaders um, for much of the race um, and then he put in a really good jump at the last to get the better of Ami Desbois. On the running, Ami Dibwa, if he jumped the last properly, might have won. Regardless, look at that piece of form. It's really good. Ami Dibwa was second. Bo Bay was sixth. Those two have come out and finished first and second at Doncaster this week for the finish out. In third was two for gold. He came out with cheap pieces on for the first time at Warwick next time up and won a really competitive looking handicap. You can forget the run of the four Santa Xavier up at Musselburgh because that was over four mile and he didn't stay. So if you take him out, the form of the horses that finished in behind double shuffle that day Give it a really good look. Handicap has put him up five. Normally you'd say that's enough for an 11-year-old, but this is Kempton. You know, this is his manner. He runs so well here. I think if you're looking for something to nail your colours to each way, you'll get a, you're bound to get a run for your money out of double shuffle, I think, because his form does stack up. Um, at bigger prices, though, we've already um, made the case on the punting pointers on Thursday night, Rory and myself, a finger on the switch, who looks now... Back on a good mark. He's back on 132, which is what he was on when he finished second to OK Corral in the Sky Bet last year. The pair of them were 10 minutes clear of anything else. Then he's had, since then, of course, he's come back. Three runs, all on ground, too soft for him. Soft, heavy and soft. Needs good ground, finger on the switch. And we know he acts at Kempton because he hosed up ground here off a of marker 122 when he beat Touch Kick. Uh, January 2020 in what looked a competitive handicap. 
there's a lot to like about each other. And he's got Millie Wanakot on board. And Millie gets on really well with this horse, gets him jumping. I think the 20 to 1 that I think's about gone, I'd still make him a bet at 14 and 16. I think that's still a fair price because I'd have him single figures for this. So I think 14 and 16 is entirely fair. I think he's got each way chances. And if you really want to take a swing at something at a big price, Young Wolf finally gets his ground. He has to have good ground. So again, with that in mind, you can put the pen straight through his last two runs, Newbury and Ascot, both on sort of soft winter ground, proper soft ground. He's hated that. He's come down £4, which puts him now on a, the same mark as he won at, at Warwick last September when he beat Vivas. Gets his ground. Trip is absolutely ideal for him. I think the track, I think the track will suit. Not a given, but I think it will suit. He's gone all right around, around tight tracks before. There's a bit to like there at 33s. And of course, you know, we've seen John Joe already mop up one big handicap last weekend. He might, he could do another one here. 33s, it's the sort of price you can sort of have a go at and with a small with small stakes and you might get rewarded each way. Um, I say it's quite an open race. You can make cases for a few. And I suppose we better have a quick look at the Ida at Newcastle. Only got the 12 runners. So the days of this being a, a sort of big field handicap, of, I think a, a gone as, uh, you know, a prize money issue sort of kick in a little bit. And it, it's close to Cheltenham and a lot of these horses that might have gone for this now are sort of holding off and probably going to have to go for the Ultima in a couple of weeks' time. Um you can argue with the toss that this, despite the fact that Cross Park's been, he's gone up five pounds and for his last couple of runs. You can argue this is probably an an easier task than he he faced at Sandown last time in that veterans chase when, um, see you at midnight just got the better of him. Um, it's it's that sort of a race. He's five to one though. I mean, it's not like the market's not found Cross Park. Um, we know obviously. He, he, being a previous winner of this conditions are fine for him the ground will be fine for him there's nothing not to like in terms of the conditions it's just whether he can defy 150 I think it's a chance but as I say at 5-1 to one, I'm sort of happy to pass him over um, Big River I want to see run well with the Ultima in mind in a, in a couple of weeks time um, he always tends to run well in that um, the one I'm going to go with I think at this stage is salty boy. I hope it wins because David Bridgewater obviously now needs. He could do with a bit of luck after losing the conditional last week. That was absolutely awful for the yard. When you've got a, a real good one like that that you know can probably mix it in graded company. And I think they were you know even talking about having to go in the Gold Cup with him if he ran well last weekend and and rightly so as well. He should have had a go. So they could do with some good news and maybe salty boy can provide it for him here. He was. He was um, six, uh, six and a half lengths behind uh, Sam's Adventure at Haydock a couple of starts ago. Weights today should bring them a bit closer together. And then at Plumpton in the old Sussex National got beat five and a quarter lengths by Seaston Spirit. And the way that he sort of travelled there suggested that he, you know, he wants further again than even, even that trip. So I think this absolute out and out stamina test will really suit Salty Boy. I don't think the handicap has got to grips with him yet. 124 still looks a more than workable mark. Um, the ground will be fine for him. He's already proven himself on soft and heavy and it will be soft tomorrow at Newcastle. So I think there's a lot to like about Salty Boy's chances here. He's at the right end of the handicap, only carrying 10 stone. I can see him going, I can see him going close tomorrow. And I do hope he wins and, and gives the David Bridgewater team a bit of a lift. There we go. There's a couple of races at Lingfield as well that's on the telly. I ain't going to be discussing them. The Winter Derby, which um, resembles a Winter Derby, which resembles a Derby in the same way that the Ida resembles a Derby, in my opinion. Um, I will not be discussing those. You'll find tips for them elsewhere, I'm sure. So there we go. Um, what's my best bet tomorrow? Is there a best bet out of all of them? Um, I hope finger on the switch each way, I think, in that... Um, in that three mile chase at Kenton, the good three mile chase. I think he'll go close. I do hope so. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend and uh, have a good week. Till next week. <laughs>